Well, hello and welcome to this um, third and final part of the three-part series of improving your garden bird photography. Um, when I say the third and final part, I think actually this isn't quite going to be the final part. I'm going to split this third episode into two. And the reason for that is, is basically I've, um, I've already partly recorded this or tried to partly record this. And it went on for quite a long time. Uh, and that was before I got to the processing side. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this final part into two. So I'm going to have a part about composition and things to look out for, uh, things to avoid or try and avoid. And then I'll have another part, which will be 3B, if you like, which will be about processing a couple of images to show you how I go through and do that. So in this part A, if you like, of part three, if that makes sense, I'm going to talk about some of the things to look out for um, that, that sort of telltale signs really that your image isn't going to work and then some of the other things to look out for that you might want to incorporate into your images or styles that you want to use. So let's start off by looking at some of the common issues that you might have with some of your images and I've got a selection here but I will say that this <laughs> this um, this area if you like this category fills up 90% of my Lightroom catalogue when it comes to taking birds. It's not um, a high success rate at all. You will take an awful lot of images to get a few that work. And this is an important thing that I really feel that I should get across is don't be scared to take lots and lots of images because not for no fault of your own, or well, sometimes for no fault of your own, images will fail. Sometimes they'll fail because you haven't got the focus right but often they'll fail because birds don't do what you want them to do all the time. They won't land where you want them to land. They won't pose how you want them to pose and they'll do things that are random that you can't control. So take lots and lots and lots of images and you will get the keepers out of them. So going through these images and starting with this one, this is an example of the number one issue that you're gonna have most of the time when you're taking images of birds. And there were two issues with this image, in my opinion. The first one, um, which is less common, but still happens, is where you've basically got not quite as sharp an image as you want. And the reason it's not quite as sharp is because I believe that, that the shutter speed wasn't quite quick enough to capture the bird's movement. So I think this was shot at one five, shot at one five hundredth of a second, but it wasn't quite fast enough and I think the birds just moved and it just hasn't captured it and there's a slight bit of camera movement on this shot but more than that the biggest issue with this image and the one that you'll come across the most is the bird just isn't in a very nice pose it you know there's nothing particularly wrong with the background there's nothing majorly wrong with the focusing and the shutter speed as I said may have an issue but the bird just isn't in a nice pose so I picked this one because this is probably one of the better ones where it isn't in a nice pose because even though there's separation between the bird and the perch the, the tail isn't overhanging the perch for instance you can see the feet really nicely there's nothing really technically wrong with the shot I will point out as well before we go on all of these are raw files so none of them have been worked on uh, well, other than a bit of cropping perhaps. None of them have really been worked on. What you see here isn't a reflection of what you would see in a finished processed image. This is another example here uh, of exactly the same thing. If you look, it's, it's lovely and sharp. You know, it's a nice sharp image, focuses on the eye, everything's great. But the, the bird's head's just ever slightly tilted. Also, the fact I don't really like the fact that the that the snow on that that log sort of tapers off to the right and unbalances the scene a little bit in post processing. If I were going to use this image, I'd probably have to work out some way of dealing with that large white line, if you like. But um, yeah, the bird just isn't in the right pose again, and that, as I you know, as I explained to you, is probably the number one issue that you're going to get. Uh, with bird photography happens all the time so I put this one in because of one simple fact and that's the bird sitting on a feeder and sometimes birds on feeders work which is why I took the shot 
because it might do something quirky or it might do something that tells a story you know where the feeder is an important part of the image but generally they don't work um, for me if this when the very first shot I actually took of a black cap was on the feeder because I didn't know what it was until I saw it and I immediately went out and I had no hesitation whatsoever taking it on the feeder and I don't hesitate usually I don't have an issue usually with taking the pictures of birds on feeders because they may do something but equally I'd never seen a black cap before and for all I know it could have been a one-off visitor to the garden it could have come in and it could have gone off again and even just getting it on a feeder is still better than not getting it at all so i'm not saying don't take shots of birds on feeders but what i'm saying is generally you're much better off if they're regular visitors and if they're not doing something crazy on the feeder you're better off getting them in a more natural environment like on a perch the reason i put this one in um is because it's all about well a couple well, two or three things actually but mainly about the background so the bird itself is posed nicely it's sharp it's in focus but the background kills the shot completely because you've got that whacking great tree stump in the background you've also got the snow on the tree stump which is providing a big white spot and also the bird's tail is clipping across the bottom of the log so it would be a much nicer image if this part of the log here let's say for instance didn't exist and it tapered down that way and the bird was you know the, the tail was separated from the log i think the fact the logs leaning or, or, or tailing off down sort of sloping off right to left doesn't help either but you can always do things about that in post i could just you know tilt the image to straighten it up a little bit but the point is with this one is the background doesn't work it's way too distracting and there's no separation on the tail which again is a shame you probably settle for that tail if you didn't have a better shot but you couldn't settle really for that background put this one in because this has got lots of issues with it really hasn't it so um i decided to put this one in to show you um i mean i took i, I did take loads of shots of this bird in this in this location I took a load of them because you just hope maybe that one of them might work or it might do something but realistically it was never going to work um, this shot um, there's so much wrong with it um, it's focused okay but the thing the issues with it are the, cl the clearest issue is the fact that you've got a load of leaves covering the, the front half of the bird or the bottom half of the bird so you can't see its tail properly you can't see much you've got a whacking great shadow across it which is one of the issues that you get sometimes so everyone says you know good light good light it's nice to get light and there is light on this one but unfortunately the lights then cause the shadow to cast across the bird which um which is really off-putting and also it's a very messy background you've got those sort of three you've got the branches sitting on the two underneath which don't really look very nice and you've also got no separation really between the bird and its background so you're not getting any sort of bokeh effect on those leaves they're all quite you know some of them very sharp and a lot of them you know sharp enough that, that they just don't give you that separation um so yeah there's lots wrong with that shot really so this is a little wren that i've been chasing around the garden for a few days and i, I can't get a shot of it <laughs> i can't get a shot of it i've got one but i don't really like it but this one here the the, the issues with this shot um there's a there's two glaring issues i think and one of them is not really my fault the bird's quite scruffy i guess it's going through a, a bit of molting or growing those growing out those feathers or something i'm not sure but it's a scruffy looking bird and that's really one of the things where it isn't conducive to a particularly nice shot but the other issue with it is is that you can't see its feet at all it's sat on this uh, gate post fence post and it's at such an angle that you can't see the bottom of the bird and I guess if if the bird were hop had hopped to the edge of the, the post and its feet were sitting over the edge here say then you might put up with the fact that it's a bit mottled and you know a bit not not the greatest of um, plumage if you like but um the fact you can't see its feet as well kind of you know unfortunately kills the shot and that's a real shame because I still haven't got a shot of this wren or any wren really so 
as much as I'd like to use it, oh, I can't really because it just it's not quite up to the mark. So this is a selection of some of the images that I really like and some quite different ones here, hopefully that will show you how you can do things in different ways, but still get good results. So these first two or three are, are really all about um, showing the bird in its environment. It normally works with the smaller birds, to be honest. So something like the blue tit here, the next two examples, next three examples are all with the blue tit. So there's this one here where it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a less tight crop, if you like. This one is a much, a much better example probably of what I'm trying to describe here. Um, appreciated here that you can't see its feet and that's one of the issues that I've mentioned uh, that have held me back from, from processing images. But I think this one still works because it's, it's its surroundings that are so strong here that, that make this shot work. It's almost like I've looked at this as more of a landscape shot with your your point of interest or your focal point on the on the left hand third if you like and then the, you know the, the rest of the image complementing that and it, it can be about the bird and its surroundings in this instance and this is another one really uh, I could have cropped this in right in and and basically lost all of this area here but I think that this area is essential to the shot because the, you know the blue tits picked up a little bit of this moss for whatever reason and to crop it down here where you can't hardly see any of the moss kind of takes away from the from the, the image so I've, I've left a lot of this in uh, so you can like I say you can see the bird in its surroundings and it gives context to what it's actually got in its beak and then to go to the other extreme if you like still while giving a little bit of space for the bird to breathe in the next series of shots are more about the focusing in on the details of the bird, focusing in and being a you know almost like an intimate portrait, if you like, of of the bird itself. Sometimes you don't have to include the whole of the bird to give that impact. And here, I feel these next set of images here feel to me like almost like they they need an inspirational quote in the negative space. It's sort of like it's just, they just feel like um, that they need that, but rather again rather than just literally focusing in on the bird and nothing else a little bit of negative space around it kind of just i think helps the shot same with this one this one this is one i've taken really recently and uh you know the, the light on the background for me is is absolutely gorgeous and it's all about taking this type of shot is all about having a good background for a start but also getting a lot of detail on the bird. So really drawing out those, those feathers and the, and the definition in those feathers and drawing out the detail in that eye and the beak. And I think, again, leaving that little bit of negative space on the left-hand side for me really works and just makes it a bit more of an interesting image than just your standard shot of the bird. And I've actually gone one step further with this shot and this is actually two images stitched together. So what I did was while I was out taking the image, I got the shot of the bird and it, and I think it ended about here. So I was very, very close up, very close in on this bird. And the image ended about here somewhere. And what I did was is I immediately realized that it would look good as a close up and that I'd need some negative space to the right of the bird because the bird's pointing or facing right so what i did was is directly after taking this shot i didn't touch the focus button at all and i just panned the camera around slightly and took a blurred or an out of focus image of some more of this background foliage and then what i did is simply matched up the uh, color temperature so the white balance in in lightroom and then uh, pasted it in in Photoshop and just uh, blended it together with a layer mask. This next image here, I've put this one in uh, to, to say about thinking out the box again. So although the bird could be posed slightly better, perhaps, um, the reason that I like this shot and the reason that I've put this one in is because this wasn't taken in a hide. This was actually taken on a tripod sat at my um, garden table. And what I'd done was, is if you look around here, all of this area here and, and down here is in the foreground. So it, the, the 
the, the yellowy green bush that you often see um, in my videos has slightly overgrown out a little bit and I used, the, used that out of focus in the foreground to add a little bit of interest and then focused in on this area here and left made sure that there was nothing uh, covering this part and when a bird comes in to land which they happily did in the summer back when when I sat at the uh, at the cut at the uh, garden table just snapped away and then got this really sort of sh nice shoot through um, sort of coloration here so something a little bit different and then this is one of those shots where I'd sort of say this is this is a question of perseverance and this is why I said before just take lots and lots of pictures you know keep shooting keep shooting keep shooting because sometimes it isn't all about the the bird in the correct pose and looking nice and the background being perfect sometimes it's about what's actually going on it's about the action of the shot so in this instance if you were just taking an image of one bird sat in exactly this location with the same foreground or whatever it's standing on and the same background it just wouldn't look good the, the stones don't work and the you know the, the the wooden plank that it sat on doesn't quite work but the it's not this shot isn't about that this shot is about the action of the you know of the the male sparrow feeding its fledgling and that comes from taking lots and lots and lots and lots of shots and then eventually you'll get one you know i spotted this going on in the garden last summer sort of summer early summer and i tried to get as many shots of it as i could so i got lots of species i think i got a robin feeding its young i got sparrows feeding their young i got starlings feeding their young and out of all of those shots there were loads that just were unusable but there were three or four or five that were really good like this one this probably isn't the best of the bunch it's just one that i've picked out and um yeah it's just a question of i wouldn't have got these shots if i hadn't have persevered and sat and taken hundreds of shots of these birds doing this to get those four or five that you know that really stood out this is a fledgling i noticed it and the first thing i noticed about it was the light uh, there's a there's gorgeous light on the bird and there's a lovely drop off into the background and shadows and the pose of the bird isn't by any means something that you would you would look at and say oh you know that's going to work normally i would just that shot would be gone it, it it wouldn't work at all but it's the fact of what the birds are doing it's the fact that it's almost screaming it's got its tongue stuck out that kind of makes it unique you know unique and different shot and that's the thing it's not most of the time it's about making sure the birds look good and making sure they're posed correctly and they're in focus and you know you've got a good background etc etc but sometimes if you take a lot of shots sometimes it's about the, the character of the bird as i was going back to or you know going back to talking about the bird on the on the feeder sometimes it's about the character of the bird and if the character shows through then the rest of it isn't as important so i've put this one in here to talk about several things really and this is back to a much more classical shot of a bird um, and the things that really work about this shot are the lines that the, the separation and the lines the fact the bird is sat on a very natural looking log it's in a very natural looking locale if you like the log looks great um, the, the moss looks great everything kind of works there and that part of that is to do with setting up which I've talked about in the first video of the series um, but more importantly than that the, the thing that works with this shot is the, the line of the bird the line at the bottom of the bird follows the line of the branch or the log beneath it and you've got that lovely bit of, of light in the background where the, the light's catching and reflecting off of the ivy leaves that are completely out of focus. But the reason I put this shot in is that I took lots of shots of this bird on this branch or on this log. And I could have used probably, it's one of those occasions where I probably could have edited or processed 20 of the shots maybe i took 50 and 20 of them were suitable for processing because they were sharp and there was separation etc etc but i carefully selected this one because it looked better compositionally so the line of the bird as i said follows the line of the log and the light's great and everything 
works about this image. So the reason I put this one in is to say that even when you get a lot of the same shot and they all could be, you know, keepers, still look to try and find the best out of that bunch and try and analyze it as to why, if you like. So I'll put this one in for one reason only, and that's because I posted this image on Twitter and it got some uh, critique. And critique's brilliant, by the way. Um, you know, I welcome critique and I really enjoy it. But the main issue with the critique was, or the main issues that, that cropped up from that critique was that A, the branch or the perch that it's sitting on is quite unsubtle, which it is. And B, the these two areas, the lighter areas, detract or sort of draw your eye towards it. Um, but the reason I put this in is because I like the shot. I really like the shot. I like the, the perch. I like this sort of, even though it is a bit unsubtle, I like the crack in this and I like the way it looks. And I, collect, I did consciously leave these in these uh, brighter areas in because I like them because I like them there I put this I took this shot I wanted the negative space on the left hand side I wanted those bright areas I wanted that you know I like that perch and so I decided to continue with this shot and process it and the important message that I guess I want to give to you here in this respect is if you like the shot, if it doesn't necessarily follow the rules or isn't necessarily one that other me, other people might like, if you like it, then then it's yours. It's yours to do what you will with. So you enjoy what you're doing and you process it if you want to. And it doesn't really matter. I mean, constructive criticism is brilliant because, you know, many a time people have said to me, have you thought of cropping this or have you thought of this? And, and even in this instance, you know, have you thought of these... And, uh, you know, nine times out of ten, I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, actually, do you know what? That's a really sensible comment. And it is a sensible comment with those areas, those light areas. But I like them. I like them there. So, you know, I put this one in to say, sort of almost, if you like the shot, that's the most important thing. So do, do what you enjoy, really. So the reason I put this shot in is, again, about thinking out of the box. So this is just a a shot of a dunnock that was sat up on one of the far branches up on the trees and I, I took several of them because I just I kind of I, I kind of like the sparseness of it if you like it's very uh, minimal it's just one long branch with a bird sat on it and the background at the time when I took it was just a blue sky it was just a uh, you know it's just a cloudless blue sky and in post-processing, I, I thought, I wonder what that would look like if I desaturated the blue out. And so I desaturated the blue out. And then I thought, you know, I wonder what it would look like if I desaturated most things out other than the browns and the greys. So I did that, although grey is kind of desaturated, isn't it? That's the whole point of it. And I really like the outcome of it. So this, I put this one in to say, it's okay to experiment. It's okay to be you know, try things out, be different. Don't worry about, you know, even though you're taking, what, I guess it's kind of, what would it be called? Um, well, it's wildlife, but, you know, a pictorial shot of wildlife, if you like. You can still experiment. You can still turn it into something else if you want to. It's your work to do what you want with it. So, yeah, that's why I kind of put that one in. Uh, and I really like it. I think it's sort of almost dare I say no I dare not say it it's not fine art but it's it's a nice shot and it's different and I like it so these last few shots um, are all about light and this is the reason that I've put these in so this one is about the light on the background so the bird and the branch aren't in direct sunlight they weren't in light they were in the shade and the whole of the background was lit up and you would expect that really to get a good shot you would need it the other way around so you need the bird and the branch with the light on and the background in shade but in this instance i really enjoy the fact that the background is the lighter area and the bird is and the branch is the darker area and it kind of 
it kind of goes against what you would expect to see but i actually think it really works um so what i'm trying to say here with this shot uh, you know is that you can look at things differently just because perhaps you've looked and thought oh there's no light on the subject that isn't going to work just try it try it because you know obviously that i'd imagine the raw the raw file of this the bird and the branch will see it considerably darker than they are in this final image but pulling them out with a little bit of shadow lifting you know and maybe dropping the highlights slightly to equalize the shot a little bit you know it, it's worked here as far as i'm concerned so you know sometimes have a look and just see even though it's perhaps not your traditional light on the subject dark on the background have a look to see if it works the other way around for you and this is one where um, it's all about the light on the bird. So this is one of my favourite images that I've taken recently. And actually, believe it or not, uh, I've actually sold uh, a print of this image, which I'm, I'm really, you know, absolutely chuffed with. And um, I hope that um, Steve, who's bought it, is going to be as chuffed with the image as I am. But this is one where the light on the image is, or the light is all about the light on the subject. <coughs> and you've got some lovely areas of contrast and yeah just i just this is just a really nice shot for me this works because of the light it also works because of the simplicity it also works because of that branch you know everything just works on this image and i'll leave you with this image which is probably my favorite um bird image out of my back garden that i've taken um it just works really well it's just got lots of elements to it the bird's doing something out of the ordinary if you like because its feathers are all you know puffed out waiting to dry it's in a fantastic um pose it's you know you've got an s curve going on the, the background complements the shot really nicely the colors all work really nicely it's just um yeah just one of my favorites so i thought i would leave you with that one and there we have it um i hope that you've enjoyed this first part of the final part of the, of the trilogy uh, that's now a quadrilogy if you like um, about taking better garden bird photos I'll be back um, next time with a uh, processing video uh, where I'll probably go out and sit in the garden take you through a couple of photos that I've taken and then bring them back and process them sort of live if you like um, for the first time uh, just to show you my process um, but I hope you've enjoyed this one. I hope you've found this one useful. Um, I hope that you've got some little, you know, little nuggets of knowledge or something from it. I don't know. Uh, for me, it just felt like I was just talking about my photos. So we shall see. Um, yeah. And um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, and until next time, I'll see you soon.